Let's consider another example of calculating a determinant by Gaussian elimination. And in this example, as you might anticipate by looking right here, we will necessarily have to switch rows if we insist on ending up with a triangular matrix. So let's proceed with Gaussian elimination and see what happens. The first step in Gaussian elimination is to subtract two of the first row from the second. And the result is 0, 0, 2, 4. All right, and right here we see a temporary zero pivot, which will eventually require row switching. But for now, let's proceed with this pivot. The next step is subtracting three of the first row from the third, and we end up with 0, 6, 9, 14. Okay, next we subtract five of the first row from the fourth and end up with 0, 6, 9, 18. 0, 6, 9, 18. All right, next let's proceed systematically. We want a non-zero pivot in this spot and this can be achieved by switching rows 2 and rows 3. But for this step, we must think of the consequence. We must think of the effect of this step on the overall determinant. And by the alternating property, the effect is to change the sign. So in other words, this operation multiplies the determinant by minus one. So let's remember that by bringing out a factor of minus one, <laughs> minus one in front. Okay, and now we will switch the two rows. Okay, and now we can proceed according to the standard Gauss elimination scheme. And the next step is subtracting one of the second row from last. And that actually eliminates two of the entries at the same time. And in the last row, we end up with zero, 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 four. Okay, and now we have end up with, ended up with an upper triangular matrix whose determinant is the product of the diagonal entries. And so the determinant of this matrix is, give me a moment, 48 with this minus 1, it's minus 48. So the determinant of the original matrix is minus 48. And we're done with yet another example of calculating a determinant by Gaussian elimination.